Welcome to the Plant Cunning Podcast, where we explore a relationship to plants, other people, and the mysteries of nature. Coming to you from the High Allegheny Plateau in central New York, we are your hosts, A.C. Staubel and Isaac Hill. Okay, well, welcome to a fall duo cast with A.C. and me and little Percy. This is little Percy. Hello. He's a cute little guy. (laughs) We love him. Yes, so he just wants to be involved as well. <laughs> just kisses Percy. Kisses only. He's still a pup. We haven't done a duo cast in quite a while, so we figure it's time to do one. Do a little recap of the conference and how our summer has been, where we're at in our lives right now with the podcast, with astrology, with the herbs, with everything. So that's the the goal for this this little duo cast. <laughs> Percy's just kissing my neck and. Hugging me and being generally adorable. <laughs> so Percy's been a great blessing this, yes, this period of time. We got him in December mm-hmm. and he's, this is actually usually it's like six months to a year old for puppies is, is where everyone gets rid of their dogs <laughs> because they're so annoying. But he is, he's so sweet. so sweet and he's all, got a lot of energy. Like he wants to play all the time, of course, but he's been the sweetest little guy. Yes. Very, very sweet. And we're very grateful for him. Yeah. So Percy has been a joy, little Pop Tart. Yeah, and him and him and Ollie, our other big boy, border collie healer mix, they get along great and they play. And sometimes when Percy's being a little gremlin, Ollie will go get a rope and just bring it over to him and be like, here you go, let's tug tug and entertains the little guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. We told ourselves when we got Percy that we got him so he could play with. Uh, ollie yeah and it's working they are yeah yeah so uh, the the big event that we did this summer was the plant cutting conference the second annual plant cutting conference and if you'll if you're a regular listener you'll know that we didn't put out an episode of the of the of the podcast for uh, almost uh, almost two months but it's just we were focused on the conference and it was a lot of work like a lot of these other herb conferences have teams of 10 20 people making them happen and for us it was it's mainly me and an ac here we have some help, wonderful help from some from our community too but the bulk of the organizing is it was us and we also you know like we did it at our home so so there's a lot of like property management that i've, mm-hmm. I've been doing this summer and did a lot of the cooking and presented and i performed music performed okay. music with my band yeah. And I've also been working all summer too at a restaurant. So I've just been like really kind of feeling a little burnt out, yeah. but so that's where a lot of my energy is going. And I haven't, we haven't been able to do as many podcast episodes this summer, you know, as we normally do. So that's, that's why we didn't have any new episodes in, in like the end of July and most of August. So and after the conference, I did some traveling too. I went to the Northeast Rainbow Gathering, which was a small regional gathering in Maine this year. And that was really restorative for me. I got to hang out by a river and um, just be camping out in the woods away from phone and computer and really having that chance to unplug was very restorative. And I've also done some traveling to go to the, I went to the Botanic Wise women's herb conference last weekend, which was also incredible. So many great teachers and just amazing people that I met. And I also did the plant initiation with Pam Montgomery, who was the keynote speaker of our plant cunning conference. And this year we did our initiation with elder. And that was also a really beautiful experience. And I learned a lot from elder and from the folks that went to that gathering as well, the initiation as well. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty restored, but Isaac's just been back to work. He's been studying and he's been in like finals week, basically the equivalent of finals week for his Vedic astrology program with Freedom Cole and having to give uh, some presentations and do his research projects. So he's been just nonstop. So I can tell why you're a little burnt out, Isaac. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I'm doing a lot of things. I've also recently realized that I probably actually have what's called ADHD. Yeah, you do. I, I always knew that too, but I didn't really realize 
what all of the symptoms were until recently. He's been getting the reels yeah. that are about ADHD that, you know, you might, you might've seen on the internet. About. I also know, you know, you don't necessarily trust everything that's on Facebook reels or when, whatever. Instagram. When they're right, they're right. <laughs> when they're right, they're right. And there's a lot of things in my life. I'm like, oh, that's that too. Oh, that's that too. But I have a lot of things going on and I'm always in this like balance point between being overwhelmed and bored. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's hard for me to like yeah like I always have a lot of things going on and uh, this way I like it but it's also can be easy sometimes to get a little overwhelmed and burnt out but the the astrology has been a lot of fun and the the finals week it's not really finals week but I just did my research project on spiritual experiences so enlightenment experiences and the astrology of enlightenment, enlightenment experiences and I presented that for the the astrology group that I'm you know Freedom Cold's Sangha astrology Sangha and I'm in some advanced classes with him, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm going to be going to India this winter to to do some in-person studying, which is amazing too. And I've been doing readings every week. I haven't been, you know, saying so on the podcast so much, but like I I am still doing readings. But I've been getting a lot of readings just through referrals and so on. So I haven't been kind of advertising it as much. And I'm trying to only do like two or three readings a week right now while I'm so busy, but I love doing readings. And at, at a certain point soon, I'm going to be doing a lot more readings. And if you, if you who are listening to this want a reading, I'm still doing them by donation through the end of the year. And then after that, I'll probably set up a website and have more of a, like a standard um, price for a reading. Um, and people have been donating what I think, what I feel as, as, as um, very, you know, decent, generous, generous and, mm -hmm. And a comp, you know, that it feels like the, it's reciprocal because mm -hmm. uh, I also put a lot of energy into the readings. So, so yeah, I'm also thinking about doing a, you know, if I don't, didn't already have too many projects going on, starting a new YouTube channel just for the astrology and spirituality and kind of like have that be Ask Isaac. I did a little bit of Ask Isaac like a year and a half ago or so where I was doing like live readings of horror charts. So I'm, I'm I'm kind of thinking about doing that and like starting a new YouTube channel just for that because it's Plant Kingdom kind, of kind of has we have a we're, we have a lot of things going on already and it's going to be a little bit more specific and even in that being more specific it's going to be stuff on spirituality and then different kinds of astrology stuff too so so look for that coming out soon and I'll be I'll do a like a, a new presentation on the presentation I did, the research I did for the, the astrology of spiritual uh, enlightenment experiences, that will probably be the first video I put out through that. Cool. So, so yeah, yeah. If you want a reading, email me at info at And I'm still doing them by donation. And yeah, look for Ask Isaac. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm learning more techniques every week with these advanced classes with, with freedom. It's just like mind blowing and being able then to put them into practice on charts, uh, that helps, you know, it's just like, I, I get to see every time I do a reading, how, how these techniques were actually work in real life. So yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So the last little bit of news, I guess, is just talking a little bit about our gardens because that's yeah. what we do every duo cast. And we're kind of winding down the season. The plants in the prairie that Isaac has, has planted so beautifully are starting to kind of Well, the, the asters are putting down. on their last like show now. I have all these yep. New England asters and various other asters. I've been collecting because like where we are, we have a, a lot of New England asters wild. And you, on the side of the road, you'll see them growing. And there's actually quite a, a wide variety of colors too mm -hmm. among them. So I've been looking for like uh, like unique colors and like propagating those so i've got a collection now hmm. and they do they do really well in cultivation you know like the wild they'll oh, have yeah. they'll be like a small kind of bush but if you give them if you reduce their competition give them some some compost mm -hmm. and and mulch they do really well so like you like in the wild you see new england aster it's the beautiful purple aster with the yellow center it's like growing on one stalk and it has one little like firework you know burst of color at the top ours are more like that but like you know how, um, like, if you imagine mums, and they're just like completely rounded, but bush full foot, out. Uh, it's like a four but they're foot like bush. four foot tall. It's yeah. like taking up, you know, a four foot, maybe five foot radius in the in the garden, and it's just 
it, it's incredible. So yeah, a little compost can go a long way with those asters, I guess. Yeah, just reducing the competition, giving them some mulch, and uh, they do really well. And so they're like the last big show in the prairie. But we've yeah. got we had a bunch of new plants to the prairie this year: more butterfly weed, mm -hmm. more oh, swamp milkweed, cup more plant the cut plant sylphia. What else? I don't know. Some, Culver's root. some more grasses, prairie drop seed. Yeah. Uh, more col more Culver's, Culver's root and more mountain mints mm -hmm. too. So there's all these fun plants in there. I think one of the stars of the whole garden this year, just with how many showed up just in the wild, as well as the ones in our garden did really well and just kept coming back was the verbena hastata. Oh yeah, blue verbena. That the did blue really verbena well. Yeah. was just vibrant and beautiful. And I got a cut off of it. My apprentice Kate got a cut off of it. And then Seven Song students came here for a field trip and we did some harvesting of some of the plants and a few of them got some verbane. And it was also a really great skullcap year yeah, as was... far as the medicinal herbs. Calendula every year. It was really well. Just yeah. a star, just keeps giving and giving. We've been harvesting calendula every week. Um, the hawthorn. The hawthorn. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a wild one for us. We have a, a lot of that wild. I don't believe like the hawthorn... They're just so abundant, like like whole trees, just red, covered in berries. And even just the ones that we can reach, you know, we're getting, you know, pounds of them. And so I've made a few gallons of tincture and have started drying some. I've never actually gotten enough in the past that I could like dry an excess of them. So I'm going to try a hawthorn and ginger tea, which was recently recommended to me. So I'm going to give that a try this winter. I'm excited for that. The other big star this year was the blueberries. Oh. So we also have a blueberry. I planted, I now have about 50 blueberry plants. And I figure with the blueberries, it's like, I have all these weird plants like gummy berries and Aronia. cornelian cherries. Uh -huh. Yeah, cornelian cherries, sea yeah. berry, various currants, gooseberries, <laughs> honeyberries, you know, which are all great, but they're not... A, you know, blueberry, everyone knows what blueberries are. Yeah. And pretty much everybody loves blueberries. And I love blueberries. They're also native and one of the highest sources. <laughs> All right. The tea went down the wrong. <laughs> oh, no. So blueberries are also one of the highest sources of antioxidants. So they're really, uh, you know, an actual superfood. Mm -hmm. And they're they're native. We have wild blueberry, high bush blueberry stands up the road. So I figured yeah. they're, they're a great great thing to like you know if i'm going to do 50 plants of any one plant it's going to be blueberries so but this year is the first year that they really started fruiting because they take like four or five years to really get going and this is our this is their fourth year and we also had really amazing season in terms of rain and weather yeah the weather was frosts pretty nice so um, we had so many blueberries amazing amount of blueberries and this is just the first year that they're producing so i'm very excited for many more years and many more pounds of blueberries yeah. as the as the blueberry plants mature because this is only the first the first real harvest first real harvest and it's the first year because i planted another 10 every year basically so the first or actually 20 so the first year i planted 20 second year i planted 20 and then i planted 10 and so that that first year, they're the ones blue, uh, they're the ones that fruited this year, and the next year we're gonna have twice as many fruiting, and the next year even more. And I want to plant even more blueberries. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they're not that hard as long as you add sulfur. If you don't have your pH, you have you have to just I mean, make your p make sure your pH is right. You do a I lot. Have, I do a lot for the them. Yeah. Uh, wood chips. I keep them mulched. I you know all that kind of stuff. But it's not that. Yeah. So. They but, do take more effort than like your average yes. perennial herb that we grow, but like, yeah. Once you get the formula down with the wood chips and yeah, you, you did sawdust too when you're yeah down yeah much organic materials I can especially woody organic material, but I got a, I recently got a good wood chip hookup so I'm very excited about that because it's a lot harder to get free wood chips out in the country everybody wants them well also there's just less it's like in the city or in the suburbs there aren't as many places to dump them hmm. but out here you can just dump them over <laughs> everyone has a hill they can just dump uh. a bunch of wood chips down so and there's like you know there's less people cutting trees because there's less houses you know so like it's just less not as not quite as easy to get to get free wood chips but got finally got a good wood chip connection and i'm excited about that blueberries love wood chips 
Yeah. We also had a really nice harvest of uh, black currants. Black currants, yeah. Those we, are amazing. We don't have that many bushes, but they were just such big producers. I was able to make maybe gallon, gallon and a half of black currant sauce and we made it into shrub to do drink mixes. And that was really fun at the conference. I served black currant mocktails with one of our sponsors and friends, Kate of Weathertop Farm. She brought her award winning blackberry lavender shrub. And we had our friends do some ragtime jazz music and had a little like mixer hour, mocktail hour in the barn. And that was one of my favorite parts of the conference this year. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the best parts about, about conferences like this are the, the networking and the the, yeah. the talking with, with making new friends, talking about bonding over herbs and, yeah. and magic and that kind of stuff. And because there aren't as many you know, in, in everyday life, there, there aren't as many people who are interested in these kind of things. So getting together to talk about these things, connect over them, share, learn, that's what people want. I mean, it's great to do the the actual yeah. workshops and lectures at the conference are amazing, but also the, the like having more of the, like during the lunches and dinners, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great time to, to be able to connect in, in that way. And so we, we added this, this mocktail hour as another way for people to to mingle and and connect and it was it was great everyone loved it mm -hmm. and we had some great music all my musician friends from pittsburgh came up so super talented yeah very lucky yeah but yeah the conference turned out really well everyone loved it the weather was perfect we had amazing speakers amazing volunteers oh yeah the volunteers saved the day because yeah we really can't just do it with the two of us once it comes time for go time like once people arrive and we had people you know helping out with every meal and clean up and just you know making sure everybody felt comfortable felt welcome making a fire making sure the sound and you know av stuff was was going well so yeah dream team thanks to everybody who came to the conference and thanks to all the volunteers who helped out if you're interested in being a part of it for next year just email us at infoplanthunting.com and we'd love to have a conversation about how we can like grow our conference team. So if you're into that kind of thing, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I feel like all of the the speakers were just so amazing. I feel so lucky mm -hmm. that, that they all came. I know. And we're able to participate every single session. We usually had like three different sessions every, you know, hour or hour and a half. And it's very, it was hard to, to choose, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and my favorite part though, was when Cara Slindruth, who, who is from Botanicwise, she runs Botanicwise. She, she spoke, she did a great talk on herbs for brain uh, health brain and health. memory. Yes. Brain health and memory. <laughs> I need some of those. <laughs> um, but then she did, she, we went, went and did a cold dip in the local swimming hole. She was like, come on, Isaac, we're going down. Yeah. <laughs> and grabbed him. And <laughs> so we did a cold plunge and that was so much fun. And it was just what I needed after being like kind of sleep deprived and like trying to, struggling to keep it together. Thanks, Karis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there, there are so many amazing things that happened uh, over that weekend. That was, that's the one that kind of springs to mind first. What about, what about you, Any? Any like roses, any big, big, very memorable things that happened? Well, I hadn't thought about this until just now, but there was the time where I was looking for someone and I was looking over here, looking over in the bar and blah, 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 you know, wanted to give them a message. And I went to the fire. I was like, oh, maybe they're by the fire. And as I approached the fire, I'm like hearing my name, like, AC, AC. And I think they're chanting, <laughs> they're kind of <laughs> chanting my name by the fire. And I was like, yes, calling out from the darkness. And they were all like, what? And they all cheered because they were like, we really want AC to sing this one song. Let's try to manifest AC. Let's like call her over. And so they had just started chanting my name maybe a few seconds prior. And I just appear, you know, and <laughs> out of the darkness. And then we sang the song, of course. So that was pretty, pretty memorable. But yeah, sitting around the fire is one of my favorite parts of conferences and gatherings in general, just being able to pass stories and songs and see what comes up and then having that warmth of the fire and the stars overhead. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's a fun story. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. We, when you have a gathering of a bunch of magical people, like stuff like that can happen pretty fast, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, and our little Percy wants to say goodbye. Well, thank you all so much for listening and for, you know, being a part of the plant cunning podcast. We, you know, do these episodes and we just sort of put it out there. We don't always know who's listening, but every once in a while we hear, you know, as we walk through the world, like, oh, plant cunning. Yeah, I know that podcast. When I was at Botanic Wise this last weekend, a few people were like, oh, yeah, I listen to that. So, we don't really know how it's impacting folks. So we'd love to hear from you. If you wanted to just shoot us an email at info at plantcunning.com or comment one of our podcasts on YouTube or we're on Insta, we're on TikTok, we're on all the things. So yeah, just let us know what you want to hear. Let us know who you think we should have on and let us know if we should do the conference improve. next year. Should we do the conference next year? <laughs> We are thinking about it. We're looking at dates maybe in August this time, like the third weekend in August, we're thinking. But the first. first. Or the first. Yeah. So we'll see about that. But yeah, we'll be announcing that once we really know. But yeah, hit us up as always. And thank you so much for being here. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.